Hello everyone, welcome to another Star Wars The Old Republic video and this one is going to be another pack opening video where we look at the Steadfast Champion Cartel Packs. Uh, right now I'm planning on opening around 3 or 4 but that might change. Once again you guys will know how many I chose to open by the title of this video. But the reason this is such an exciting pack opening, the reason why I want to open so many of them is because we have some pretty significant changes that were made to the Cartel Packs. Uh, most notably the two things that were changed is firstly we have a guaranteed chance cube drop out of every cartel pack and secondly they did away with bronze items once again and if those changes sound familiar it's because they did it all the way back in Knights of the Fallen Empire so when they introduced the anarchist cartel packs these exact changes were made and the community went an uproar they were really unhappy that was when they first introduced grand chance cubes and the community didn't like the fact that the chance cubes mostly just gave you crap but now I think the community has become a lot more normalized with these chance cubes, they're used to it now, so Bioware has once again reverted back to those changes. But one of the major concerns with the um, with the anarchist packs, because that was where they began with this and then they ended it at the revenge packs, but the major concern within those cartel packs was the quality of silver items. People were, weren't too happy because the silver items basically just became the new bronze items and that's a very legitimate concern but when you look at the steadfast champion pack preview here as i'm showing you guys on screen uh, if we look at the silver items they're not bad look at the intrepid knights armor set for example that is a very high quality armor set that could easily have been a gold rarity but you know now it's silver because once again they're trying to maintain that silver quality and that's just not coming from me uh, Mosko also said that in the forums because people were concerned about it but as you guys can see it's a very high quality armor set and it is silver rarity I personally when I first saw this data mine I thought it was going to be gold so I'm pretty excited about this but we'll have to see if that trend holds up for future cartel packs um, the reason I'm so excited and actually happy about these changes is they're trying to combat two things that I think cartel packs should basically improve on. The first one is the drop rate of gold and platinum items. Now Musco said that by greatly reducing the amount of items you get in a cartel pack as well as by uh, doing away with bronze items, we will have a higher chance of getting the gold and platinum stuff. So once again, we're going to open these cartel packs and see if that actually holds up in this video. And then secondly, they're also trying to change the fact that when you open a cartel pack, normally you get a lot of the same junk over and over again. And they wanted to make it that when you open a hyper crate, for example, you will get a wide variety of items. So you won't have to keep opening cartel packs to get the thing you want. So that's those are two intended changes they're, they're trying to do. So at least their intentions are great. But let's see if that actually holds up with this uh, opening. And... Um, and yeah, we'll test it. So right now I'm buying up four hyper crates, but we're only going to claim one for now. We'll see if we actually need to end up opening all four of them. I'm not sure because um, there aren't many items in this pack, right? There's only one and a half pages, as you guys saw, which is not a lot at all, considering the other cartel packs have gone all the way up to two and a half to three pages worth of items. I've already talked about my thoughts on the items themselves in the um, preview video, so you can go check that out if you want to know what I think about it. But right now I'm more concerned with the drop rates and what's happening, so I'll skip over to the pack opening. Alright, so 26 packs, let's get into the first one here. The Intrepid Knight Supplementary. Um, the Intrepid Knight, mostly the thing from this one is the upper body armor, that's the really nice uh, piece of the armor set. The Helmet's okay, just kind of this little circular thing you can have at the front. Uh, the emote, OMG. I'm excited to check that out, so I'll preview that at the end of this uh, opening. Another emote. So much for the diversity, but uh, maybe uh, just the RNG. We'll see if that, um, if that changes. The advanced ice blue crystal. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this crystal color. I mean, it looks nicer than the ones we've gotten before, but not a fan. Not a fan of these uh, weapons either. Yeah. Oh, here we go. The first gold item and pretty early on, the Dark Eternal Throne. Yeah, I was expecting that to be gold when I saw the preview on um, online. I mean, it's a really, really nice decoration. I'll preview all of these decorations, like the Bounty Monitor as well, uh, at the end of this uh, pack opening. Oh, another gold and so early on, the Mandalorian Tracker. Uh, this one, once again, I want the upper. Even the supplementary would be okay because the helmet looks pretty nice. But the lower is all right. You got to complete the set, right? Not bad, uh, another War Heroes Crystal, but um, so far already two gold items and uh, quite a variety of us. Oh wow, another gold, another Dark Eternal Throne. I'm not complaining, that's a really, really nice decoration. I'll show you guys that at the end. But um, wow, three gold items already in. It really, The RNG seems to have improved, but um, we'll have to open up another crate. Here we go, another gold item and we got the Mount, the Vectron Predator. 
That one's got a pretty nice flourish, it seems, so I'll preview that one as well. Normally, I don't preview mounts, but um, that one, it seems like it's worthy of, of checking out. Another one of these weapons. That's the problem, though. When you only have a few items in the set, you're going to get a lot of, like, the repeats in terms of silver stuff. And I'm not a fan of the crystal or the weapons, so for me, that's just a bunch of junk. I don't think it'll sell well in the GTN, either. And we got the pet. At least the pet is not a reskin, so I'm not too... Um, aggravated about that. Normally the pets are just reskins over and over again and so those aren't the best. And we got the second pet. Alright, another one of those blaster rifles. Okay, so how many golds is that? I forget. I think that was four. And here we go, a fifth gold item. Here we got the upper body armor. Awesome. I really wanted to preview that as well for you guys because I want to see what that uh, animation is going to be. It seems as though it's a laser that comes sticking out of your back, but I'm going to be really excited to see how that plays out in-game. Oh wow, those are a lot of gold items, guys. So, RNG seems to have improved for this first hypergrade. We'll have to open up another one at least, a uh, minimum, to see if we can, um, if that drop rate holds up. Alright. And the Regal Vorn Tiger, nice. So, wow, um... The gold rate was definitely improved, didn't pull out a platinum this time, but I'm not complaining. We did end up getting five gold items, as you guys can see. And um, in terms of the diversity, we did get a pretty wide range of items. I got almost every item in the pack, actually, aside from, uh, yeah, I almost completed the Mandalorian tracker armor set. I didn't get that other um, gold mount, but I got basically everything else. That's not bad. Okay, I'll just claim some stuff here. Okay, so I'll just skip to the part where I've claimed everything and I'll start previewing it. Alright, I'm back. So I've claimed everything that I think uh, I want to preview from the item stash. Let's mount up and go to this empty room here where we can take a look at some of these decorations. Because def uh, some of them are definitely worthy of a note here. So first we'll check out the throne. Um, just go to show all available and I think it was started with a D. So dark throne or something. The dark eternal throne. Uh, really, really fitting at this point in time of the game because we are the emperors of the uh, alliance and everything, and especially with the Iocath story and stuff, there should be some place where we can go and, um, and command everything. And so now we can outfit our strongholds with a really, really extravagant and awesome looking throne. We do have some other thrones like the Dark and the Throne of Enlightenment and stuff, um, but they're not as big and as extravagant as this. So if we're going to be the leaders of the Izakul and everything, we got to have a throne that matches the role. Um, Let's see here, we got the Bounty Monitor. Now this one, uh, from the preview, it looked like it was just a blank screen, but I really hope it's going to be a clickable object that it actually displays something, because a blank screen would be obviously be very dull. Uh, so let's see here. What was it? The Bounty Monitor. There we go. Ah, yes, it is going to be a clickable decoration, and let's see what shows up here. Got to get closer. Oh, come on. I think I'll have to just put down the Y offset a little bit here. Uh, so I can get, actually click the thing. There we go. Alright, so let's see here. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah, so as uh, you thought, it, it just displays kind of a bounty. And, uh, oh, wow, it actually changes. So uh, you, ha you can display one of two bounties. One of them is a Togruta. The other one looks like a Sith Pureblood, I think. But um, either way, that's a really cool decoration, especially for silver. So not bad, the decorations out of this pack, and the decorations in general recently have really been on point. The Iocath ones from the last one were super nice as well. So that's really awesome. Uh, the Sign City of Zakul, so I'll quickly show you guys that one. We'll see if there's anything different. All these banners kind of just look the same to me. Normally I'll just like throw the Imperial banners all over my stronghold, those are the, uh, the nicest. Oh, this one's definitely different though, it's not a banner, it's um, kind of just looks like an emblem. I guess it's uh, the entrance of Zakulian cities or something. I don't know. Nah, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't use it. It doesn't look too nice. All right, going on to some of the other decorations. The emergency floodlight. So that obviously it's going to be um, a light, but it doesn't fit at the top. It seems to fit in the uh, floor. So let's quickly check that out. I always claim two of a decoration. I learned that the hard way. I claimed a whole bunch of ones and then I would sell the other one, right? I'd claim one for the prestige. But the problem is when you're actually decorating strongholds, oftentimes you want it to be symmetrical, which means you often need two of each decoration uh, to make it seem symmetrical. So just a little tip for people who are interested in decorating their strongholds. Uh, this is the actual light itself. It doesn't light up the room too much, it seems. Um, 
it's got this kind of cool little mist coming out from there, so that's really awesome. But uh, it had, I'd have to go outside and um, yeah, not bad. It's silver. To be fair though, I mean a lot of the bronze decorations were nice too. It was just the bronze armor sets that I didn't like and the bronze mounts. Um, those are the things I'm happy they got rid of. Alright, looking here, the forge monitoring station. So well, that fits in the floor large as well it seems. so. Uh, okay, let's see if I can remember my alphabet. H-I-J, okay so it would be before that. There we go. Oh cool, looks pretty fancy. Uh, it doesn't seem like you can click anything, so it's just kind of one of those uh, decorations that just kind of sits there. I kind of wish you could do something like the bounty monitors where you can like change something on the screen or that would have been cool, but it's kind of one of those basic decorations. Okay, is there another decoration that we have left to preview? Because I really want to get onto that armor set, but let's finish the decorations first if we have any does not look like it but we will look at we'll look at the emote uh omg now i thought this was going to be like the no emote oh wait we have one more decoration here the banner asylum whoops forgot about that one okay we'll quickly look at this one first i thought that emote was going to be like the no emote from uh darth vader uh, uh um revenge of the sith revenge of the sith at the end of that but um We'll see. Okay, here we go. This is the Banner Asylum. It's got this cool kind of wind effect where the banner itself is waving. I think that's pretty cool. It makes it different at least. It makes it stick out. But um, Asylum, I'm not too crazy about the Knights of the Fallen Empire storyline, so I don't really care. Uh, hope, I wish they would do something like that with the uh, original banners. Let's check out the emote. So we'll just do uh, turn off the interface. Ah, uh, meh. That's kind of underwhelming. I thought thought it would have been cooler. Uh, you're right. I am in utter disbelief. I thought the emote would be a little bit cooler than that. Come on. But um, okay. Let's look. Uh, see if we have any other decorations left. Nope. But we will look at the mount. We'll leave the upper body armor for the last because that's going to be the most exciting. But we'll look at the mount quickly and see what flourish is there. The Vectron Predator. This one's obviously uh, inspired by Slave 1, uh, which is Jango Fett, and then becomes Boba Fett's uh, ship. It looks very similar to that, but if we drive it around, we'll quickly see what the Flourish does. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a miniature version. Oh, I thought it would look cooler, actually, but uh, that's the Flourish. So it kind of just moves that big thing over one, and it has this cool blue electricity effect. But um, that's about it. Yeah, I wish um, they would have made it bigger, I guess. Maybe that would have made it cooler, but uh, just looking at it now, uh, let me know what you guys think. I don't think it's the best mount. I kind of now wish I didn't use it and just sold it. <laughs> I'm not sure how much it would sell for, though. The Vectron mounts often don't do too well. I mean, I see it going below 1 million. But let's look at this now. I've held it off too long. Let's look at the Mandalorian tracker. So, um, now the color scheme itself is green. I don't really like that, but um, it's going to be the effect that really matters. Because you can always change the color with a die. Uh, Alright, let's see here. When you activate your weapon or unsheath it, that's when the effect activates. And there we go. It's just this kind of laser that comes sticking out. But, um, oh man, once again, that kind of disappoints. I thought it was going to be an actual laser. Like the uh, Relentless Hunter's helmet that I've shown off in other videos. For those of you who don't know what that is, basically it's a helmet that's available uh, all, way back from a cartel pack. And um, it actually shoots out a laser that moves, but the laser actually shoots out. This laser, it, it, it's kind of just a light. It's not really a laser. It's a light that sticks out from the back. Um, you know what? The upper body armor is still cool, though. I'd still probably, I'm probably going to end up using it on my bounty hunter and stuff, but um, it just could have been better if that was actually a laser. That would have been cool. Oh, well. Does not disappoint. Does not disappoint. Definitely worthy of being gold, in my opinion. Cool. Okay, so um, I think we will end up opening one more uh, because I just want to check out the gold raid. But honestly, like that's about it. I don't, I don't have any other desire to keep opening more because um, I've gotten a lot of really cool stuff already from this pack. But we'll have to open one more just to see if the drop rate holds because I want to see if, um, if that was just a fluke, if I just got lucky with five gold items or whether that's actually kind of a new established drop rate because that would be awesome. Um, Alright, so let's get on to it. 26 more packs. 
Also, if you guys have been opening these packs, let me know what uh, what kind of drop rates you guys have been getting. Because I was checking on Reddit, and people are definitely getting a lot better stuff from this one. I'm going to run through this pack opening here, not talk too much about what I'm getting here, because it's all kind of going to be the same stuff. Yeah, as I mentioned, I could have unlocked basically the majority of this pack just opening one hyper crate. So they definitely fixed that whole diversity issue because beforehand, if you opened a hyper crate, you might get maybe half, sometimes even less than half the items in the pack. But now since there are less and also, um, whoa, a die module? I did not know die modules dropped out of these packs. Um, well, I guess it makes sense they wouldn't show up in collections, but... Um, a pale orange and dark. Yeah, those were data mined. There were die modules that were data mined. I think I talked about them in the video. Uh, okay, here we go. Another uh, first gold item. We got the supplementary. That is awesome. So we've completed the set basically. Uh, that's really cool. Yeah, those die modules. I'll, I'll preview them at the end, but uh, they don't look too nice. And there we go. We got the upper body armor of the intrepid knight. That's the really really nice one. Another gold item, we got the lower body armor for the Mandalorian Tracker. Yeah, since there's only one gold armor set, you're probably going to get quite a few of those. Uh, the downside obviously being the market's going to be a lot more saturated, because normally there are two gold armor sets, so now since everyone's going to be getting that, they're going to be putting it up on the GTN. Um, a great time to buy low, sell high. Okay, it seems like there is a gold die module as well, the orange and black. Why is that gold? I don't know. I am not happy about that, ugh. Die modules? Come on. And even then, the ugliest die modules, why don't you do something cool, like anything with black and white, though those are cool, but um, black and orange? Ugh. Not sure how many people are going to want those. Uh, as I was saying, the upside is, since, uh, these, since this pack has such few items in it, uh, it's a great time to buy low sell high. Like the Intrepid Knight, if that drops anywhere near 50k, like buy it. The upper body armor, buy it. That's going to be an awesome, awesome buy. Uh, there's the Gyrian Dune Hopper. That's a, a pretty ugly looking mount, but the reason I'm fine with it is because it's at least it's not a reskin. Ah, hey, there we go. The Flare, Sign of Havoc. Awesome. Uh, that's probably going to be the least valuable flare because the Eternal Command flare and the Corrupted one is nicer, but um, it's still a really nice flare nonetheless. Alright, so it seems as though from this one we got four gold items. Oh, sorry, we got five gold items actually. Did we? No, we got four gold items. Never mind. I'm counting wrong. So that's the die right there. Actually, it doesn't look as bad as I thought, but it's still not very nice in my opinion. Um, but it's gold. Anyways, four gold items. So the drop rate for gold items has definitely improved. Uh, I opened two here. I got five gold items in my first hyper crate, four in my second one. But, um, uh, you know, if I'd opened this with the previous drop rates, like if I'd opened the stalwart commander pack or whatever, I would probably get like three gold items, maybe two gold items in my next one. So I'm definitely getting a lot more gold items. And of course, we've got the obligatory 26 chance cubes. I'm kind of double-minded as to whether I should open them, open them for this pack because... Um, Grand Chance Cubes are just so much better to sell. So if you're opening this thing, like just sell the Chance Cubes. You can sell them from anywhere, 500,000 to a million credits and make a ton of credits off of them. Opening them, you, you could get lucky, but I think like 90% of the time you won't get lucky and he'll just uh, lose that on the credits. So we'll run over quickly to the GTN right now to see what these Chance Cubes are selling for. On Harbinger, they're selling for 750,000 credits, but keep in mind, uh, these prices are based off of the current drop rate, which is 10 to 12 chance cubes per hyper crate. But quite soon, uh, the chance cubes will drop tremendously in price, most likely, because now they've all, almost been doubled. Now you'll get 26 out of a hyper crate. So I'm not sure whether like the price on the GTN will necessarily drop by a half, but they will definitely drop to some extent. And, uh, oh wow, so some people are already putting this up. The reason they're putting it up and they're, uh, they don't have the bind timer like I do is because they probably got it out of a grand chance cube. I know there was someone who had the Intrepid's Knight armor set as well. They had found it and mentioned it in general chat. And, um, um, uh, yeah, so they put them up for insane prices on the GTN because they know that uh, they're the only ones who have it because they dro it dropped out of a chance cube before the pack was even available. Hey, look at that. The tight lightsaber pike's only selling for 41 million. Wow. You know what? I, I might just pick that up. I mean, that's a really cheap price for a lightsaber pike. Uh, the Senya's lightsaber pike didn't drop below 70 million, and I think the tight lightsaber pike looks a lot nicer than the Senya one, so I'm not sure why it's selling for so cheap. 
I mean, you could just sell all of your Grand Chance cubes you have there and, and probably buy a Platinum item, actually, from the GTN. Um, since apparently this hyper crate is supposed to make platinum items more um, uh, more widely available like the prices are probably actually going to drop even lower than that so that's actually really cheap uh, i'll keep an eye on those you should keep an eye on those as well if you have those types of credits i'll throw it into my legacy cargo bay here it'll make an awesome item for the giveaways that are coming up i'm, I'm just stacking up on platinum items as you guys can see and i'm going to be doing a huge giveaway but uh, more details on that later anyways uh yeah, I'll update you guys if I choose to open the chance cubes or I'll just cut to it basically because there's really nothing more to say about this pack other than it did improve the drop rate. Um, you can open less now and get more because uh, you don't need to keep opening hyper crates to try to get the items. There's fewer items which means less hyper crates you need to open to try to complete the, the sets. All right. All right guys, so I chose to actually end up opening the grand chance cubes but um, I'm gonna open them the fast way. So if you don't know what I'm doing here, I'm basically just quickly uh, pressing open pack, but then pressing escape really quickly after that. Uh, it's a really quick way to open cartel packs if you don't wanna waste the time of doing the flashy animations and stuff. So when you have something like 50 grand chance cubes, it can get quite tedious to open them. But uh, I'm just gonna open them the quick way and then we'll quickly run through the items I got here. It's looking like I just got a bunch of crap, unfortunately. Uh, some of these emotes look okay. I mean, the clawbird kick, that's a pretty nice one. And the droid, I think that one sells actually pretty well. Um, okay, got the generator. Uh, yeah, I already got this decoration. And the grassland Vractil. Ooh, well, that's a pretty good, uh, that's a pretty good drop. Um, I do not have this decoration for some reason, so I'm going to claim that. Grand Chance Cubes are great for that. If you're a decoration collector, like I started decoration collecting only very recently. So I really like opening Grand Chance Cubes because it, um, it allows me to collect some of the older decorations. And this relaxed tracksuit armor set, that's pretty awesome. Uh, that, that's a nice uh, bronze armor set to get. I would definitely suggest selling Grand Chance Cubes. The only reason I'm opening, is opening them is because I have so many credits already. And um, I think it'll just um, kind of be a good demonstration of, of really what a Hyper Crate's all about. Because I think a lot of people actually choose to open the Grand Chance Cubes rather than sell them. So uh, this is what you get out of 26 Chance Cubes. I will open 26 more just because why not? Uh, maybe we'll pull out something really nice. But remember, you could sell each of these for like 700, 800k. So that's quite a lot of, of credits you're, you're giving up there for, uh, for gambling. Here we go. So the reason I'm opening them so quickly like this is because it can be quite tedious to go through the animation. And um, I know a lot of people actually, they, they were opposed to this new style of pack opening because they didn't want, to, uh, didn't want to be a longer drawn out process. But here's a really quick way of doing it where it's really not an issue anymore. All right, looking here, ooh, cool, we got a gold uh, item. We got the advanced white-gray eviscerating crystal. Oh, I got excited. I thought it was just going to be the pure white one or something, but the white-gray is just as nice, honestly. It looks just like the pure white, and that uh, sells uh, very well in the GTN as well. Now oh, the ball toss. That's, that's just pure crap. That sells for like 5,000 credits. Uh, the Darth Scotia's armor set and the droid repair table. Oh, here's a good one, the Beach Party emote. Probably one of the most popular emotes in the game, and I've seen that go up on the GTN for like 20, 30 million. Uh, we'll have to test to see how much that sells for. Ah, here we go, another decoration I don't have yet, so we'll claim that. Now, uh, this seems like my item stash is doing something weird where it moves everything to the top, I don't know. Okay, so we're just looking through some of these as well. Ah... Uh, Jawa face. I'm not sure what that is. I've got quite a few armor sets here. The Potent Champion, Red Blade. Unfortunately, a lot of them are crappy. Uh, that's a problem. Getting a full armor set is cool and all, but um, they don't sell very well in the GTN. Which also means you could just go on GTN and collect them and spend like 80,000 credits. You don't need to... Um, you don't need to... Uh, open chance cubes from we'll quickly check what that's selling for it's on the gtn for 8 million the droid emote but um uh, i doubt it sells at that price so yeah the uh, no beach party either uh so i can basically decide what that sells for uh we'll, we'll we'll try to have some fun with that and we'll see what we can get for that but basically the pack opening is over guys i'm pretty happy with the new style of packs let's see what they come out with when it comes to uh, the quality of items hopefully uh they'll keep the quality of items higher so they're not giving us a whole bunch of crap for silver and stuff but um 
time will tell. For now, this is a pretty decent pack. And the good news is if you want to get the items from this pack, you don't need to spend, you know, so much money on, on buying multiple crates. Usually one hyper crate, it seems as though will suffice and it'll give you more bang for your buck. You'll get more gold items, it seems. But as I mentioned earlier, let me know in the comment section what kind of luck you guys have had because I know people have been having some pretty good luck with it, but I'd like to, you know, get a, a better sense of how the community feels about this. Anyways, I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know what you guys think and I'll see you guys in the next one.